Thanks for tuning in to watch The Ordinary Filmmaker once again. If you like lenses, well, you're going to like this video. I'm going to focus particularly on Canon RF glass. If you're a Sony user and you want to know more about what's coming out for Sony cameras, well, stay tuned. I'll be putting out a separate video on that. But first, let's take a look at the structure of this video. And you will see chapters down below, so if you want to skip or jump around, feel free to do so. The first uh, rumors that I'm going to cover off are, are put out by Canon Rumors, and it was published right around, well, the beginning of this year. And this is what Craig thought was highly probable. Most likely these lenses would be coming out. I think he put it as a CR2, saying that he had validated them from a good source. And I'll go over the ones that we, he did get right. So it looks pretty promising of what we might expect to see later in this year, as well as into 2022. And then I'll get into the speculative rumors, the ones where it's kind of nice to talk about and dream, but there might be absolutely no basis in reality. And in some cases, we've got many different variations on one particular focal length, like 24 millimeters or 50 millimeters, and that'll come up later. So now let's deal with our first segment, which takes a look at Craig's predictions for 2021. First up, two tilt shift lenses, the 14 millimeter and the 24 millimeter. Now the 14 is at f4 and the 24 millimeter is at f3.5. And what's remarkable, about, re, try that again. What's remarkable about these two tilt shift lenses? It's a first for Canon. They both have autofocus. Now, when are we going to get these? We've heard nothing, nothing about these whatsoever. So we might get them later this year. They could be next year, but I'm not going to discount them and say we're not getting them because as you're going to see by the rest of the items mentioned on this list, Craig has quite a few hits here. All right, now let's take a look at some prime lenses. Now, the first one is the Canon 16 millimeter prime, and this is an F 2.8 and it was announced on September the 14th. I really do want to get this lens. It starts at around, or it starts, it costs $299. And it's the, the ideal prime that I was looking for. I was saying this all along when I heard the rumors about 24 millimeters. I said, I really wish Canon would come out with a 16 millimeter. And what you'll see is when we talk about those rumors, nowhere on that list was anything about a 16 millimeter. And that, what that's telling us is that the rumors that we've been getting for Canon this year haven't been like the past is we're getting far fewer information to validate and the information that we're getting is less trustworthy. All right, so what else in terms of primes? Well, you'll also remember we got the 100 millimeter F 2.8 macro and that's this guy right here. An incredible lens. Um, I'm not too happy with the price. I think they could have lowered the price a little bit. They, they, and they also jacked up the EF 100 millimeter but in terms of performance, in terms of quality, this is uh, an incredible lens. I'm just going to keep it there. Uh, I, I, I really love that lens. And that was a prediction that also came true. Now, what we haven't had announced yet, or no inkling of any announcement coming, are the 35 millimeter and the 135 millimeter at 1.2 and 1.4 respectively. And what I'm really curious about is that 135 millimeter. It's not really a filmmaker's lens, although, yes, I get it. You can use it for that. But when you think of the 135, you think of street photography. You think of journalism, photojournalism. And I'm not talking about the video aspect, just photo, black and white, where at times F2 is going to be too shallow of a depth of field. The EF version, the 135, was and still is an incredible lens. So I'm really looking forward to seeing this one and hopefully it does come out soon. Last year, the rumor was we were getting a 70 to 135 millimeter, but thankfully this is gonna be a prime because I think what better way to do this justice than a prime? All right, so what's up next? Well, we have some macro lenses. And actually, <laughs> I've screwed this up. So the 100 millimeter F 2.8 is a macro lens. Yes, you can say it's a prime because it only does that one focal length, um, but I actually mixed things up. What I should have said in the primes is the 50 millimeter, the F 1.8 STM. And I do have the EF version, the 50 millimeter. This was really strange for me. I never really cared about 50 millimeter. My wife told me to get the lens because she wanted us to take portraits. 
I was using a crop sensor at the time and well it wasn't very good because I had to stand so far back I didn't really like it and it basically sat on the shelf for years until I started this channel and I got the R5 and then the 50 millimeter came to life and I loved it I ended up getting the RF 1.2 50 millimeter that I use for this channel and I just got to say I love the 1.8s I love these pancake lenses they're very affordable they offer a lot of value and I think it's a terrific lens. But now going back to the macros, yes. So we are supposed to get a 24 millimeter macro f1.8. It's also an SDM and it is image stabilized. Uh, and this thing too, the, the 100 millimeter that I talked about earlier when I was talking about primes, it does have image stabilization. It also has this SA control right here, which allows creatives to experiment. Now I'll be honest with you, because I'm not a photographer first and foremost, I'm, I haven't compl I'm not at the point here where I'm ready to experiment with SA control. I've just been focusing on getting some really good shots. And uh, you know what? I'm, I'm starting to fall in love with this. I'm starting to get the settings correct in the camera. I'm starting to get good results. So I'm going to be using more of this next year. But for now, I've got other lenses I want to focus on. Now what's coming up next? We're going to talk about some zoom and super telephoto lenses. And this to me is where I start to get excited. These are lenses that I don't use an awful lot personally, but when I do, like this 800 millimeter right here, that's got a two times extender on top of it. It's what I use for shooting the moon, the planets, and I just absolutely love that thing. But what were the predictions for 2021? Well, let me read them off to you. We have, these are all RF mount, 10 to 24 millimeter, the 14 to 35, 18 to 45, 70 to 200, and 100 to 400. And here, well, we have three hits. So we got the announcement of the 14 to 35 millimeter f4 image stabilized lens USM on June the 29th. And then of course the 70 to 200 on November the 4th, 2020, and the 100 to 400 millimeter just recently alongside the 16 millimeter. And that 100 to 400 is one of those affordable lenses at f5.6 to what is it? 8 8 8. And it's an image stabilized USM lens. So Three out of five there, Craig got a hit. So this is, remember what I said about, I believe these are highly reliable um, rumors that came from Craig at Canon Rumors. He put them as, I believe, a CR2, which means from his own grading scale, his legend, that these are validated and come from trusted sources. But now the exciting part, this is where things go a little bonkers. And this is, it's kind of like the supercars of glass. Are you ready? So the super telephoto lenses, now we got two of them announced, and that's the 600 and 400 millimeters at 2.8 for the 400 millimeter and F4 for the 600 millimeter. Both were announced on April the 14th, and I would love to play around with these. Actually, I wouldn't because I'd risk, I, I would be afraid of breaking it and then having to buy it, and these are very expensive lenses. But two out of five hits. Again, Craig has hit these well. And what I'd like to say about this segment is Canon has come forward and said that there's going to be more lenses like the 600 and 800 millimeter f11 affordable lenses. And to, you know, talk about this one a little bit, I'm not going to remove it because if I do, that light, well, so what if it's a little bit bright? It's my channel, I can do what I want, right? This thing here, other than being a really good club for hitting somebody if they try to attack you, is terrific. Sure, some cons, the autofocus isn't very fast, but when I'm shooting the moon or I'm shooting wildlife, quite often, I move this over to manual focus and I'm using focus peaking and it delivers really, really good results. The slowness of the autofocus isn't an issue because I'm no longer using it. Now, with a two times extender put on here, you are gonna run into some very tight shooting times during the day. Now, during the summer, you're not going to have problems between, let's say, like 6 in the morning and 7 at night, at least here in Canada, because the sun rises long before that and sets after that. But in low light situations, this isn't going to do well. And here in the wintertime, I'm basically limited to around 11 o'clock in the morning till about 1.30, 2 o'clock in the afternoon with the two times extender on. And if I try shooting outside of those hours, I'm going to see some pretty heavy chromatic aberration. I'm going to see some softness, especially out to the edges. But this is what I call my summer lens. Uh, and I did shoot some great stuff with some muskrats this past winter, 
But this is what I like to shoot without in the summer. It gets me going out for walks. This thing is a lot of fun and I really do enjoy it. So I, I think the whole idea of making more of these super telephoto lenses, uh, let's try to put it right there. There we go. I think this is great for us ordinary filmmakers. And you'll see in the comments down below, people saying, yes, but Simon, I couldn't use these as a professional. They just don't work for wildlife. But you see, for the rest of us who can just barely afford an R5 or an R6 or even an EOS R, and we look at one of these and thinking like, hmm, $1,000. Now, what they're saying is correct. As a professional, you're probably not going to want to use one of these 800 or 600 millimeters F11s. But if you're an ordinary filmmaker and photographer, yeah, they're a boatload of fun. So the good news is we're supposed to be getting a 1200 millimeter. That's right, a 1200 millimeter super telephoto lens at f8 image stabilized USM. I probably won't want to try to put that two times extender on, but you know I will just to see how bat crazy that goes. Uh, we're also supposed to be getting a 800 millimeter and a 500 millimeter, and that's 5.6 and f4 respectively. And I think this is where the fun really happens. This is where we tend to get excited. I do. Listen to me. I'm so excited by these lenses because this is where I have fun. This is, I mean, I know what a 50 millimeter can do. And when I take this footage into post and edit it, apply my presets, adjust the audio, and put in my graphic overlays and then upload it, at no point during that do I go, wow, look at that. I look amazing. I mean, I do, but I don't go in there like, wow, that's pretty awesome. Let, look at that lighting. Wow. And the edges, how sharp is that? I don't. I, I, it's, it's, it's bread and butter stuff. It's not stuff to get excited over. But earlier this year, about a month or so ago, had a really cold night. The air was cleared, low humidity. I took this out again, and this time I shot Jupiter. And this time I got the most amount of detail ever out of that 800 millimeter. And, you know, I could probably do better if I went further north. You see, where I am right now is in the greater Toronto area. So there's an awful lot of light pollution. So to be able to pull the, the rings of Jupiter, to be able to get that level of detail, and what I've been showing you here, I've shown you a few clips. Some of these are really zoomed in so that you can see on a small screen. But I got to tell you, when I'm watching on my 4K television, uh, this stuff is pretty impressive. So anyhow, I could ramble on for a whole hour about that. Now I want to talk to you about some of the wild rumors. So take a look at this graphic right here. What you're going to notice is the source. Look at this. How many of these are CR1 or even CR0? He didn't even bother to put a CR beside it. And usually what happens in that case is somebody else like the new camera or somebody else is reporting on the rumor and hasn't said whether it's validated or not, so he doesn't put his own number on it because he just doesn't know. He hasn't heard anything. So I consider a lot of these wild ass, sorry, sorry, wild guesses, and um, we've got a lot of them. Look at the date mentioned, too. Some of these go way back to 2019, and I'm talking about April, May, June 2019. Uh, just some ridiculous dates. So when we look at the lenses on this list here, these are collected from across the internet. A lot of them come from Canon Rumors. I like using Canon Rumors as a benchmark because Craig, he gives us a legend, a way of measuring how valid these are where they come from trusted sources. And unless it has a CR2 beside it, to me it's pure speculation. And he'll tell you the same thing. CR2 means it's coming from known sources. It's validated by at least one source. And CR3 means it's validated by multiple sources, and sometimes he considers CR3 fact. Although, Craig, if you're watching, why don't you come up with like a CR5 and just say, it's real, it's happening, nothing's going to change other than it's getting pushed. I think a CR5 is needed, and skip the 4, go right to 5. So we got a lot on here. Let's take a look at some of these lenses again. We've got the 135mm, which we finally do have on Craigslist, so that's far more valid right now. We got the 17 to 70. We've got uh, 85 millimeter, 70 to 135, which I don't believe is gonna happen now. We do have the 100 millimeter F2.8, but there's a lot of other um, formulas here that we haven't seen, we haven't heard anything about, and we may not. And in my latest list, I think there was about three different um, formulations for the 24 millimeter. 
I know it's frustrating. I know it's frustrating. When it comes to lenses, there's many reasons why we don't have much in terms of leaks. And that goes for bodies this year. Remember that 16 millimeter I talked to you about? It's not on this list and it hasn't been on any list. And sure, there it came. And the R3, nobody had any inclination of the R3 until about 12 hours before the announcement. It was a complete surprise to everybody. And why? Canon used to be the best source for leaks because we'd get stuff all the time. It was very easy to cover Canon rumors because we knew most likely it was correct. Unlike Sony and others where it's much tougher to get that information. But 2021, like 2020, has received disruptions across verticals and horizontals. Everybody's impacted and it's not just chip shortages. People's working patterns, people aren't working in groups so much anymore, but working remotely. And this has had an, the effect of reducing that flow of information that allows us to get the leaks. And so when it comes to rumors on lenses, please disregard a lot of what you see in this list. I haven't even bothered to update it in the last six months because I haven't really seen anything credible and I just feel like I'm putting out absolutely useless information to get you guys excited over what might not happen at all. So everything we talked about in the first part of this video, the first segment that came from Canon Rumors at the beginning of the year, I would say there's an 80% chance that what's not on that list will come to pass because look at how many hits Craig got right. And I think that's really Really good. I, I think when it comes to reporting rumors out there, Canon Rumors is the one site that has that is the most accurate. They do. He does a really good job. He really takes it seriously. He wants to put information out that isn't correct. And when he does get something wrong, you'll see he'll post something shortly there thereafter. He's very apologetic. He did the same with the R3 when he got the date wrong, but he does a very good job of validating the information, protecting his sources. And so whenever I report stuff from Canon Rumors. Craig, thanks a lot for making this available to the marketplace. But other sources, not so much. Nikon rumors, Fuji rumors, Panasonic, Sony Alpha, Sony, and the list goes on. They can only report what comes to them. And in some cases, the sources aren't very trustworthy. They aren't validated, especially with Sony. They, they have a completely different view of Canon, and they want to, they completely tighten things up. The A7S crew was segregated from the rest of the crew making it hard to let that information pass through. Oh, and one other thing before I sign off, please reach over, touch it, subscribe. It, and if you're on your smart device, just click on that little icon right there where it shows my logo, click on it, subscribe, because it really does help my channel grow. Believe it or not, just watching my video from end to end isn't enough. YouTube needs to see you engaging, clicking on stuff, comments, likes, and subscribes, and subscribes and likes are two of the most important engagements that you can do. And then YouTube, based on that, will say, okay, let's recommend it to other people similar to this person. And that helps my channel grow. And as you've seen already in the last few days, subscribers are picked up and likes and comments. So thank you very much. But on that note, my lunch break is almost over and I wanna go out for a quick walk. Thank you so much for watching The Ordinary Filmmaker and we'll see you again soon. But please, please, Tell me what you think of these lenses in the comment section down below. Share your experience, not just to me, but for others watching because you're providing value to people if you've used any of the lenses we've talked about, including the 800 or 600 millimeter, millimeter. And if you don't use these and you use the professional lenses, please share your feedback. Help educate me and my audience because quite often while I'm familiar with the pros and cons of all of these, not everybody is, and when you say this is the reason why you should consider a professional lens even though it's north of $3,000, that might speak to somebody and save them from purchasing something that otherwise they shouldn't have purchased. Once again, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you again soon.